right. You're listening to the Dreaming Insomniacs, the podcast. Very special guest today, Craven Something Scary. We're going to talk about some pop culture stuff and some uh, other projects he's working on as well. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started. Um, what made you want to start doing this? Oh, man. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Glad to be here and, and been looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, man. So, for me, it really was all about my passion mostly for Scream, fran- the for Scream franchise, and wanting to share that with other people. And I've been, a, I'm an OG fan. Like I was, I went there to the first movie in the theaters, you know, for Scream 1. I've seen them all. And my love started back in, in January of 97 when I watched it. And I've grown, it's grown ever since then. And I decided, you know, it was time to have a channel where I want to start one where I just talk about my favorite movies, like my favorite Scream moments. And then Halloween's my second favorite franchise. And just horror in general, you know. And that's really what it was. And I, so I don't think I don't, I don't know if anyone will ever come find my little channel, but that's okay. I'm doing it because I want to. It's a passion thing. It's it's a, it's a thing to do out of just for joy, you know, enjoyment. And that's where it began. And I I'm so humbled and grateful to see how people have come and they've they've stuck around. And I'm meeting people that have the same passion as I do. And so it's been great. But that's how it all started, man. It really. Just taking a shot, you know, take a chance. It's awesome. It's funny. I was actually uh, born three months before the movie came out, the original. Oh, nice. September 9th, 1996. And my first experience with it was I was about five or six. And my sister had the third one. I think it was either on DVD or VHS. I can't remember. But I begged Mm -hmm. her to let me watch it. She didn't want to let me, but I convinced her and... I was petrified for years of ghost face and Mm -hmm. I overcame that fear by learning how to love the movies when I was like 14, but like I became a little too obsessed, like even more so than you guys, you know what I mean? Me so now, like it was like, I was like painting my room red, like the walls and scream four, like my parents were pissed. Oh, like that, that level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. They had acrylic paint too. So imagine trying to, Oh my gosh, (laughs) dude. Um, But I let it go for a while and then like i don't know i guess i revisited it about 10 years later and, mm-hmm. and in that I, I became friends with jamie kennedy it's kind of weird in nice. a good way in a good way i'm actually yeah. I'm, going to see, I'm going to see him in october in tampa i already let him know and i'm um, gonna try cool. to get my uh, ghost face mask signed because if you really think about it in scream 2 when randy does die he's not i mean he's being coerced by the killer sure but he's not really following the rules he steps in front of that man. I know, man. He broke his own rule. Right. Like he should have known right. not to, not to do that in a horror movie. I know it's it's a shame. So I don't want to get him to write on it. Is um, remember to follow the rules because I sure didn't, or something like that, and have him yeah. sign it as Randy, and then sign his signature, and then the eventual goal is to get the other, you know, Nev, yeah. um, Skeet, and uh, Matthew. Although I don't really want to wait five hours in line for Matthew Lillard. It's, it's going to be a long wait if you don't have a VIP ticket yeah, for yeah. an appointment. That's the only way to, right. to surefire way to do it. Uh, That's why I'll, I'm getting the VIP tickets to see Dad JK in October. Nice, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. So, that yeah, that was my exposure with it. Um, but Halloween is another great franchise. You mentioned that as well. Yeah, I, I really like what they were starting to do with it with 2018, but Kills disappointed me. It was just kind of gratuitous. Yeah, I, I'm in the, I, you know, what seems to be the minority of that light kills. I know yeah, it no, was I pretty like, brutal. I like, I like it, but it's like, I wish there was just a little more story. Yeah, it, there was not a ton of story. It really was, it was kind of more or less Michael's movie just to kill. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They, just, they, they prefaced us with that. And I do love the flashback. That part's amazing. Oh, it's so good. Yes, yeah, so well. In fact, when that started, I thought this was 78 footage that was from the vault. I'm like, this looks really authentic from 70. Yeah, they did a very good job. So good. That was that was amazing. And it was not spoiled for me. So I didn't know it was going to happen. And it was a joy to watch that those first 20 minutes or so. You want to know my guilty pleasure Halloween movie? Oh, no. Don't say it. Which one? When do you think it is? I think it's going to happen. I think you're going to say Resurrection. Oh, fuck that movie. Oh, good. <laughs> no, I but, was going to be like, okay, don't say that. I will, Zombies 2. That, that line, trick or treat, motherfuck is funny. That's funny. I, I, I do. I, I actually sometimes in my head, believe it or not. Oh, it's funny. I'll be like the most 
like like the most random thing, and I'll I'll just hear him saying it. Yeah. Trick or treat, mother. mother. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, yeah, no. It's is funny, it zombies but, too? No, it's Halloween three. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I watched it with Chelsea last week. She didn't like it, but I get why. I get. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a not good perfect. little movie though. Listen, yeah, I think it's scarier than the rest of them because it's like instead of Michael Myers, it's like all the children in America. In fact, the parents that are wearing them, everyone's dead. Everybody, everyone's dead. everybody's dead. That's right. Yeah, so that's Colonel. a scarier ending. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, sometimes I agree. like those unfortunate endings are better than the forced on Hollywood attack on happy ending because it's like different. You know, oh, it's like yeah. it's not supposed to leave you feeling good. And that, no. like, that last line with Tom Adkins screaming, turn it off, and it echoes in that reverb. It's, it's it terrifying. It chills every time. Yeah, yeah. And Tom Adkins, man, what a great – that guy owned the 80s for, for horror, man. That guy was so good yeah. back in the and day. I, I really liked his character in the movie, too, because he's not the conventional, you know, uh, main main guy. He's uh, an yeah. alcoholic who's, like, I guess he's not cheating on his wife because they're I guess they're, like, separated because he has his own place. But he's sleeping with everyone. And yep. he's not, he's not the typical like hero type in that movie. That's why I really like it because it's like you see all these movies, especially coming out what 1982. What other movie right. was doing that? It's it's completely off, like original, honestly. And I, I like True. it for that. I agree. It's a great movie. I think if it had not been named Halloween, it would it would have been revered much more. If it, if it had just been like Season of the Witch, in or the words other of Tommy name. Lee Wallace, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think it would have done much better. But I you know damn well enjoyed. John Carpenter shadow directed that movie. Come on. <laughs> yeah, he was. I mean, Carpenter, won, I think that was kind of his whole point was he was done with Michael after the first mm -hmm. one anyway. He yeah. didn't want there to be a sequel to Myers. Right. And then they, yeah. they did it. He wrote it. Him and Deborah wrote it. And they got kind scared. Like, and Tommy yeah. Lee Wallace was the fall guy. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, no, guy. really. Yeah. But then he made it. He made the one with Tim Curry. So, I mean. That's revered yeah. as a great thing. Aside from the spider thing, we'll, we'll forget about that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. <laughs> um, what's another uh, one of your favorite like movie franchises in general? It doesn't have to be horror. Yeah, well, I mean, outside of horror, man, I'm a I'm a big fan of like the, a lot of the older stuff. I love like all the John Hughes movies yeah. from the '80s, like Ferris Bueller, love the Breakfast Club, Breakfast and Club. Bueller, yeah, yeah, those are fantastic. Uncle Buck's amazing and. Man, I mean, the Back to the Future is is a is a is a nearly a perfect film, in my opinion. I was that just movie. talking about it that on my other podcast today. It's oh wow! How that works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing. Everything, oh, music, I love that movie. Alan Silvestri's score was phenomenal. The theme music, I still, everything. The performances were just so good in that movie. Uh, yeah, man, I, and, I'll that, go back and to that Karate trilogy too. too. It's not like the Matrix where like they progressively get worse. Oh, they, I know. They, at least the three of them together are watchable, and this, the worst one is the second yes. one just because of Biff being who he is. But like yeah. that gets reset by the end of it, so it's fine. And the Western mm -hmm. one's just fun, so it's like you have a nice fun trilogy there that you don't have to just yeah. like enjoy the first movie, even though it's the best, and it clearly is. But it's literally not like the Matrix, where the Matrix should have just been the only one and not the three that been. came after. Yeah, yeah, oh gosh. And the last one that came out is absolute yeah, dog. Oof. It's absolute dog doo doo. I can't Warner stand it. Warner was going to do it with or without us. <laughs> the line's literally right. in the movie. It's in the movie. Uh, I know. I don't really listen to them much anymore, but I listened to Green Day for years. I've actually seen them live five times, and they were under Warner. I, I don't know if they're still under him. It's kind of mm. murky. But from what they've like portrayed, Warner sucks. Mm -hmm. Warner's like a shitty company to work for. Yeah. Time Warner and Warner, though, are two different companies. They're separate entities. I think they are connected, but they claim they're separate entities because they're like subsidiaries or whatever. It's weird. Yeah. A lot of weird like loopholes that big companies use to like, get around shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. Different boards, I'm sure, executives, the whole nine. Yeah. You a Star Wars fan? I know that's like a really weird question. To ask uh, I'm a fan of, I've seen them all. I've, mm. I'm a real big fan of, of four, five, and six, the original. As, and then I love Rogue One, which mm -hmm. is really well done, I thought. And the, uh, the rest that of them. That ending is ballsy. Oh, it is. Uh -huh. Everybody dies. Oh, everyone Just dies. Kill is them it? all, dude, which has never been done. It's, Star Wars, you're used to always having some of the protagonists live. No, no, not in Rogue One. Like, we're literally going to mm. sit down and watch the, the nuke, essentially, come across the water. You know, I mean, what else do you do? It's yeah. like inevitable. You just sit there and embrace it and just hold on. Here it comes. 
Right, right, exactly. I mean, I love seeing Jimmy Smith. I always, I mean, like I said before, my favorite season of Dexter is season three mm-hmm. because of Jimmy Smith. Screams yeah. in the background. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, no, I love like, it. That sounds like professional Hembry. Prof- uh, well, yes, Henry. yes, it is. And the funny thing about this is, like, anytime, yeah, that, that's going on right now. Wow. Yeah, I live in Florida, so it's a pretty good storm. And if you hear the AC, <laughs> I do apologize. And I also have four animals. all right no the funny thing about it is is nobody can really ever say that scream jumped the shark because they did in the first movie they literally had the guy who jumped the shark they did get stabbed yes (laughs) the guy where the whole it all came from with him literally such a good job on that that movie is just a perfect film i love you know what he's really good in is barry have you seen that yet little hater show on um Mm -mm. hbo yeah Yeah. he's he's like a hit man but he's trying to be an actor Henry Winkler's in it? Yeah, he plays the acting what? coach. What? <laughs> oh my gosh, I gotta he's see. He's eighty this. now, but he still looks great. Yeah, no, he's 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 funny. He's always funny. I didn't even know he well, was not in the Scream. Show. He's an asshole in Scream, but that's just the character. Yeah. 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 Oh, what Solid do you think guy. of this scene right here, right? When uh, Tatum's talking to uh, Sydney and you see Ghostface in the woods. Do you think that's Roman? Do you I think it's that? a good chance it's Roman, yes. I, do too. I, I really <laughs> At I least think for my Roman's head kidding. Yeah, man. I, I think it's Roman there keeping an eye on things. I think he's just there making yeah. sure he's just watching. You know, he's, he's I mean, it, it could have just been a mistake, but it kind of like it works out in that way. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people hate that retcon. I love it. I mean, a lot of people shit on Roman, but he's personally my favorite killer. Oh, OK, because I, I just think like his, his reasoning behind it is to get but it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. Like he was denied an entire life. It's true. Man. That's what Sid was given. Him. And yeah. then the whole that like gives light to the whole well at the time trilogy, and I mean I think Scream Four is cool and all, but Charlie sucks, and I didn't actually like Jill until very recently. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I watched actually, Scream Queens and I really enjoyed Nora Roberts. Oh yeah. I didn't like her in American Horror Story. <laughs> okay. Well. Oh, I I heard things about her um and Evan Peters' relationship. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get into it, but. Oh no, I haven't heard. So I I I, I don't follow a lot of that she stuff. Was, too. Um, she was, oh. uh, yeah, to him, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, so okay. you, and you can kind of see the undertones there when they're, like, together on screen. So it's just a little you know, weird. But, no, look, Scream Queens is, is great. I, I love that yeah. scene where <laughs> uh, they do, like, the psycho nod. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character is like, I've seen that movie 50 times, not this time. And, uh, <laughs> that's great. I, I saw this first season of it. but I don't, Yeah, it's I never... this first season. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It's been a bit, but I enjoyed the first season. And yeah, no, it's very, very good. Yeah, very, very good. Um, no, I mean by the end of like, like season two gets really stupid. I kind of just dipped out. At Same that point. Yeah, yeah. I watched think the first or two episodes, and I'm like, I'm done. Well, it's funny. I fell asleep at the end of season one. I didn't really care what happened at the end. I looked it up. It's them, Leah Michelle. But um, yeah. <laughs> uh, my my girlfriend Chelsea was telling me, dude, no, that's terrible. Don't watch it. Like, I was watching it, and, like, this shit happened, and then all of a sudden, like, Jamie Lee Curtis's character is, like, the head of a nursery or some shit like that. I'm just like, what? And she's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, don't. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, that's not um, you. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take your word, right? Yeah, yeah. take your word for it's like, it. It's like, it's Shameless. You ever watch Shameless? Sh- Dude, I haven't seen that either, man. That's, oh my God. no. The first, like, five seasons are great, and then okay, her, it's, like, it's... Like Kevin Smith's last five movies, they just start progressively going down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Aside from Tusk, that's original. I like. Well, that. yeah, I, I I enjoy the I like the reboot of Bill and Ted. Not Bill and Ted. Uh, no. well, Bill and Ted, I did actually like that one. Also. I didn't see that yet. Oh, it's yeah. If you you got it's worth watching. It really and is. I, what you were just saying? Say that again. Uh, Come back well, to that. You I was like yeah. I was going. I, I said Bill and Ted by accident. What I meant to say was the. The, the the reboot of mm-hmm. Jay and Silent Bob yeah that came out I, I've been waiting back. for somebody to tell me that they liked it so I could talk about how I liked it too uh, I actually it liked it yeah it yeah I did yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of funny parts too like yeah <laughs> um I don't know like just like there's like a lot of like in jokes with for Kevin Smith fans in that movie 
And I think but my, my my favorite part is like that part where Tommy Chong's in the uh, Blunt Man and Chromatic reboot. And he's like, it's time this reboot went up in smoke. <laughs> yes. That's so good, and, but they have Val Kilmer as Blunt Man when he's played Batman. But because of the, if you've seen Val, he has this throat cancer thing. Yeah. Uh, fun, fun fact about that. In 2012, right before he got diagnosed with cancer, my dad, he worked in Amtrak. He was a conductor. And he actually had Val Kilmer on the train. And Val Kilmer let him sit with his his son and his wife and um they just oh. had a nice conversation my dad told him he played the best best dog holiday he had ever seen and he was nice. really really cordial and really really respectful he let him keep his ticket with this autograph on it well that was very cool to hear yeah. man because yeah, you Malcolm never know how the these, these hollywood types are you know, oh some of them are assholes. you meet them some of them are yeah. really rough dude and you know who's also really cool if you play video games i think i sent you the interview alex hernandez from mafia 3 yeah yeah, yeah, man. The one, he is the polar opposite of his character in the game. Mm-hmm. Very Aww. genuine, down to earth, understanding, well educated, like really, dude, genuine guy. That's and he so told cool. me something that he had never told anybody. It was about Vin Diesel, and essentially, like when they did a movie together, he's always acting because people always want something from him. So, like he, uh, they were talking about their fame, like and like the sit down, and he's like, Vin Diesel was asking him about the video game, and he's like, not on your level, but whatever. I'm paraphrasing, and he's like, I missed that. Right. Think about it. Like Vin Diesel at this point, he's like in everything. His face is yeah. everywhere. And he just yep. probably misses those. He probably like I talked to him. Essentially, he's always acting. So like, you know, it's, it's like he, he probably misses those days of being like small time. I mean, he also did those Riddick video games in the mid 2000s. So he's yeah. done the video game thing. I just think that was really cool because not only did this actor from from Hollywood, who's been in movies, share something that has never been shared with ever about somebody else. But yeah. it, just, it was just like a really respect. I, 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 I like earned this double respect for both of them at the same time. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. It's nice when you see the human side, like, you know, they're, they're people just like us, you know, they've, they've not forgotten who they were before they became who they are. And yeah. so many people right. do, unfortunately. Oh, Tom Cruise. I mean, he's a great, oh, gosh. great actor. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm not going to get into his personal life because right, everyone right, knows, right. Oh, but yeah. it, it's just like, some interviews yeah. like he starts putting people who's interviewing him in his pl- in their place and it's like have a little bit more respect than that buddy just because like I you know, have an yeah. entire group of people that think you're god doesn't mean you can mm-hmm. treat people like that right that's I understand. my take on that mine too yeah yeah no I, I mean we're all human beings there's no reason to to be that way i, I just don't like people that are like that not necessarily like Tom Cruise, because that is he is very different as far as mm. in other words, not everyone's gonna be different like Tom strata. Cruise. Yeah, different strata. But but at the mm. same time though, there's a lot of people that are not there, but they act like they are. And so I just yeah. try to like distance myself that's, from mm-hmm. those people. That's why I don't listen to Green Day anymore, right? Because like mm. if you listen to their lyrics, they claim to be about all these good things. But really right. if you look who they hang out with, who they're making money from, it's like, okay, think about it like this. I spent 15 years i i maybe spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on green day and all i got was almost getting called up on stage not catching a drumstick having their engineer wish me luck in school over facebook right i barely gave jamie kennedy a small fraction of that money and he's been consistently my friend for over a year that's see man. think about that exactly i was Dude. catering to, and it, it's funny because in his videos he's talked about that a lot of people are fakes and they care about one thing and that's they're protecting their assets, you know, and it's true. But it it's is. good that there's also good out there. And I, I like to think that there's more good than there is of the other. That's, yeah. That's the way I think yeah, about man. it. What and, do you think it, of this whole Scream 6 controversy? I know everyone's been talking about it, but I figured we'd touch on it now because kind of sure. feeds into it. <laughs> You're talking about Nev, right? Yeah, Nev, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I was disappointed as everyone was when she came out, you know, not disappointed in her, disappointed that it, it happened, you know, that, and when she came out and used that strong language, like, you know, I'm not, I wasn't, I didn't receive an offer that I felt, re- felt reflected in my worth. And we know Nev is a complete professional, so for she her to is. say that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They probably She's offered very her like thousand dollars. Yeah, well, it had to be, I mean, the way... <laughs> Insulted. She had, and she was insulted by it, whatever it was, and yeah, it's not you know, I felt horrible, and I'm like, this is, come on, you know, these guys that are holding the purse strings, you guys got to do something, do the right thing, and you know, there's a, there still is, a, there are some folks in the fandom, in the community that still think she's going to be in it, 
and I hope she is. I hope she I, is, but I'm not going to cater to any like what no. could be false information. That's where exactly. I kind of stop the train. It's like let's report on things when they come out, and if she's yes. in it, she's in it. If she's not, she's not. Oh well. I mean, at right. this point, it's taking place in New York. We could do something different. We could have fun. And I'm actually, as far as now, the new casting with Samara Weaving added, and mm-hmm. uh, the kid who played Flash Thompson, right from um, yeah, it's Tony Re- yeah. Revolori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. No, that's good casting. And I like Dermot Mulroney. He uh, he's great and shameless. Yep. So I I think they could, especially if they kill all these people like that, that would have some balls because these are notable actors and they're very talented. So I think that they could really carry this without having, especially with the returning cast too. I mean, Jenna Ortega is yeah. amazing. Um, oh, Melissa awesome. Barrera. I mean, people crap on her for it, but I really think another another stab at it um, <laughs> will, will really there. solidify it. I mean, if you look, pay attention so. to the first scream, look at the first part of it before when, like, you know, the opening scene with Casey Affleck, and you go to the first scene with Sydney. Nev Campbell seems pretty one note, but by the end of the movie, she's not. And I think the same thing with Melissa Barrera and Five. I hope so, man. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I wasn't impressed with her performance in Five, but I'm, I am hopeful, and that this is this is going to be the movie she breaks out in. And I love Jenna, of course. Jenna's amazing. Oh yeah. And you know, we got and Kirby let's back. Let's not forget uh, Jasmine you know? Savoy Brown. Yes, and Kirby Hayden Penn yep. here. Have you heard the story about what she went through? Uh oh yeah, man. Her her she, yeah, she's sober now, yeah. thankfully. And and so I good think, on yeah, her. You know, and then I saw this video from TMZ that was like saying, "Oh, I hate better deer in a bar fight." And it's just like people yelling at each other. She's not even drunk. Like clearly, yeah. somebody must have said something creepy to her yeah. if she was that angry. <laughs> I mean, exactly, like TMZ, TMZ sucks, and everyone knows it. So like, why do they even try? Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. I'm, I'm excited for, for for Kirby to come back because we all know. She's yeah, man. Dead. I mean, come on, having that commentary with Wes Craven and Hayden in there, saying, "Oh, she's still moving." Yeah. I know. Wes was like, yeah, he, one of his very last tweets. Mm-hmm. You know, he talked about that. And, it was his last movie. Yeah, it was his last movie, man, that he that he directed. And he produced some stuff after that, but that was Thank the last God movie Thank God he made directed. Scream 4. Imagine if My Soul to Take was his last movie. Yeah, I mean, that movie is a punching bag. I, I still think it's it's got its own little charm to it, dude. It's great. It's better I, than the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Oh, hands down, dude. Yeah, Not even is, close. It is. It is better, yeah. It's better, yeah. Yeah, and Red Eye is great too. I, I oh, it's funny Red every Eye. time I sit down. Don't judge me. I love it. I love it, but I still haven't finished it. I've tried to sit down three what? times now to watch Red Eye, and I like I get about halfway through, and I'm getting there, I'm getting there, and then something else happens where I have to do something. Oh my god! So it's not even like the movie, and it's yeah, like, the pacing's great. It doesn't really like, feel like a Wes Craven movie aside from I know the mm-hmm. music's. I think it's done by Marco Beltrami, so that's there's right. That. That's but, that. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to get to the third Killian act. Murphy. Oh my, Killian Murphy's amazing. Oh, he's so good. So is Rachel McAdams. And oh yeah, Cra- It's it's it's. I call it a Wes Craven gem. Very underrated, man. That movie's exceptional. Yeah, yeah no, great really, tension. He has a lot of gems, though. Oh yeah, he's got also a lot of flops. But as what what artist doesn't have in perfect oh, yeah. work? You know, that's right. Nobody's yeah. ever. We're human beings. We're mm-hmm. not perfect. <laughs> Nope, and you got to think about with movies. You've got studio interference. You've got yeah. budget restraints. There's all these outside factors that make you know factor into what we see. Oh yeah, and, and you could sit there and pick apart even the opening scene of the first screen. This you could I mean, with the 4K version, you could clearly see it's a retractable. Same with the the second and the third. That's why they switched to the CGI knife in four, and yeah. then they mm-hmm. didn't do that for five. And I don't know, it kind of looks tacky in five. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they'll figure it out. They, they will, man. Everyone's got their own little thing in their own style, but I mean, Wes is my guy. He's my favorite film, favorite oh, yeah. film, favorite filmmaker. Obviously, name my channel after him in honor of him. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's all of his stuff going back to Last House on the Left from '72. Just a brutal masterpiece. Tough to watch it because it's so raw. But man, yeah. it's a no, what a way to start. Really raw, but ballsy. Very ballsy. Very. Oh my gosh. And that's his first movie. Like this. Yeah. Okay. Here I am. Here, here. Here's my entry into the cinematic world. Ooh, wow. And he made the Hills of Eyes after that. He made that afterwards. He sure yeah. did. Yeah. And then he made the part two and he knew it was bad. He's like, All right, yeah, he's babies. He disowned it essentially. I know. Yeah. I know he did. Yeah, he did. You know, he's I, like, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, before I became like a public artist, I really, a lot of my time was spent into watching interviews with him. He was very well educated. He was very, sir. I mean, he's a very, very smart man. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he, 
I think he knew a lot of what was going on with uh, the producers of these four movies. You know, I think he he made it a big point to call it out in the third movie. Oh, dude. And I, I, I don't know. I think that, like, four was really messed with by those people as well. It was. The original was. movie with the opening scene mm-hmm. and the alternate scenes is a lot better. Um, but... Wes Craven had some balls, and he didn't even yep. uh, let those people walk all over him. And it's unfortunate that he went with brain cancer. It does. I it does, know. It does That's suck. So sad. And you can tell that everybody who worked with him, even to this day, are genuinely like distraught because they don't they don't know how oh. to live in a world without Wes Craven. And it's I, true. I think it, it sucks because there's no there's no one else like him. No, there's not. And I I mean I've I've had the honor of interviewing a couple of cast members and. When I interviewed, you know, Nancy Ann Ritter from The Girl in the Bathroom and then uh, Lynn McCree, who's Maureen Prescott and Scream 3. I saw that. Yeah, that's, I, you know, when we talked about Wes, she just lit up just talking yeah. about him and tell, saying how, how hot it was nothing but first class. That was the word she used for him was class. Yeah. Everything was class from the, your, your, from your trailer to your, your, your food services stuff to your, Everything, anything you wanted, he had someone there to get it for you. Just Completely tell him. professional. Totally. And he cared about his people. You could tell. Yes. Just by did. the way he spoke, so soft spoken, so loving. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, more blood, you know. His, yeah. It's great as quote, more blood. More blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. yeah, rest in peace. I mean, he yeah. was working on a remake. He was going to redo the hills. Uh, I mean, uh, People under the stairs. He was going to come back and redirect it again, update it, and that was that was in his plans to make it his next film. And we never, you know, now and I he completely you. denounced the Scream TV show. Really? Well, I, I mean, I know he was involved in the season one. He was. Oh wait, you know, no, that he, wasn't him. I think that was Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin wasn't happy. Oh, was happy yeah. Kevin w- didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. West did. Yeah. And yeah. And then he, then he unfortunately passed away like right away. I remember I was living with my first girlfriend. I was just, uh, I was 18, almost 19. And I, uh, I, we'd just watched Scream 4. And mm-hmm. uh, I heard the news and I, I cried. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know Wes Craven. I cried. Mm-hmm. Me too, it buddy. Was, it was hard. It was hard. You know, and what I thought of was like, there's not going to be any more Wes Craven stories to be told. They're, they're over. No. And they're always great always man yeah. and he's and he know he knew how to not only do pacing but he knew how to tell a story and communicate an undertone without beating you over the head with it he could mm-hmm. communicate anything you like like the people under the stairs he could he could communicate this whole you know uh, economic and in, imbalance and class imbalance and and things that it's very very it's very clear, but it's not to the point where it's distracting. Right. But when you get through watching that movie, you're like, I see what Wes is. This is a great movie, but he's also telling us there's more here going on. This is a uh-huh. bigger, bigger story here. I love when artists do that. Like, cause if you look at scream with the whole Billy clearly being the killer alongside Stu, and it's like, mm-hmm. it is beaten over your head, but in a way that it's meant to be clearly obvious. And yes. it's like one piece of his art, portrayed the opposite of what is portrayed with Scream. And it's just Mm -hmm. showing different layers of what the artist created throughout his lifetime. And I find a lot of immense respect for that because, I mean, everyone does it. Everyone does a different form of art. And, you know, it's Mm -hmm. not like, you know, it's like a a special thing to be versatile. But what I'm saying is I just, I appreciate and I respect it when I see like Wes Craven didn't want to make Scream 3. He wanted to make a drama. (laughs) <laughs> right. So, at the, yeah, he wanted to make well, that's when he got his music of the heart. You know, he got he got the one movie. He said, I want to do more than horror. And he told the Weinsteins, you know, in this multi picture deal, if you're going to get me to sign the contract, you got to give me one. It's not a horror movie. And, and they agreed. Up, yeah, they did Good it. For him. Wes yeah. Craven had balls. I mean, I like, again, look at yeah. his first movie. Oh, gosh, you can't dude. put that out. Mm-mm. And also be a genuinely good person without having some serious balls. Yes, and that's I respect it immensely. Me too. I buddy. wouldn't put on a movie like that. Ah, <laughs> uh-uh, no, and especially the time you got to oh, remember when it was now. too. Yeah, you couldn't do that now. No, I mean, just, oh my god, imagine the social justice warrior tirade if you put that movie out today. Oh, even the remake. 
and the that remake was watered down. Out. It was watered it down. It was watered down. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I still haven't finished that one. I've only seen the the scene that we're talking about. Yes. Clearly, that makes it the way it is. Um, and they even softened that scene up. Oh, I hear you. On for the remake. And you know what's another low budget one I really love is Evil Dead. The original, oh though. God. I know a lot of people shit yeah. on it, but I even like it more than two. I like the serious straight horror over the comedy thing. For that. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I, yeah. I respect the fact that, what, he shot it on a budget of $600 on a weekend in the freezing cold without even working windows in the cabin. I mean, sure, I was putting Bruce Campbell and all that through hell, but crazy. they dude. all had fun. You can tell. It wasn't like a Stanley Kubrick situation where he's treating his actors like shit. Oh, gosh, no. And it was the practical effects. You got I me. Mean, I love practical yeah, effects, great. man. It's, For what that is, they're fucking amazing. They are. They're so good. Sam Raimi knows how to make a film. I think I think Spider-Man 3 was, uh, <laughs> I think that was him trolling, honestly. Because he didn't <laughs> want to do Venom. He didn't oh. want to do Venom. Avi Arad did. And he's just like, no, no, we're going to make him skinny. We're going to, we're going to, oh my God, we're going to do it. We're going to have Eric Foreman. Eric Foreman is going to be Venom. And then... <laughs> We're going to close out this trilogy with a fuck you to Sony. And we're going to get the fourth one. And they didn't get the fourth one. They hired James Vanderbilt. Uh, well. Oh, they goofed on that one. I haven't, <laughs> and, and to be completely honest, I haven't seen those sequels. So I've sounds like I don't need to see them anytime oh, soon. Oh, it's just Spider-Man? Sam Raimi's movies? Yeah. yeah I, I, I didn't. Two's I've amazing. Seen, well, I've seen, the, I've seen the Tom Holland ones. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. Uh, no One fun. Home is my favorite, honestly. The last Wait, one. Even though there's The last one. Okay. I haven't seen the last one yet, favorite. man. Oh, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I've seen the first two Holland ones, but. I like the first one more than the second. Same. There's a lot of things I didn't like about Far From Home. Yep. But, I agree. But, like, I don't need to hear Jake Gyllenhaal say as Mysterio, it's time to kill these children. It's like, come on. Come on, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Chris. Um, but the, I, I mean, there's also really cool parts of that movie too, like the illusionary effects, the illusion mm -hmm. scenes. They're amazing. They're great. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that same week, I think, um, or within that same month, It Chapter Two came out, and I saw it also. And I remember going to see that, and I liked the first one, even though it has its issues. But <clears throat> I'm sitting there, and these CGI bugs come on the table, and I'm like, Am I fucking watching Scooby Doo Two? Is this 2004? <laughs> I'm yeah. like. I'm not sitting through this movie. I, I paid money to be here. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And then like James McAvoy has sees this kid get crushed. And it's like, I, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to finish it. I hate this movie. I'll never watch it again. This movie sucks. Mm -hmm. Fuck this movie. And I just, I sat through it and I, I'm walking home. And this is the best part of the story, right? Because I lived on the beach side, right? And um, the place I lived was really old. So it was like really other people <laughs> lived there and they weren't the cleanest. Uh, I gotcha. get home, I'm on the phone with my friend and I hear this pitter patter on the ground. I think it's a rat. And this it's a, this cockroach that's like three inches long and this wide. And I, <laughs> I like use the force of like what it would take to kill a human. Like I curb stomped <laughs> it. And I was like, yeah, and it took a lot, but it was like that movie's cursed. I never want to watch that horrible pile yeah. of trash again. No. I'd rather watch the Tim Curry, Tommy Lee Wallace one any day, even with Heck the spiders. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Same. Tim Curry, boy, that guy was oh my God, uh, so good. Do you like Dexter? Uh, never seen it, man. I've had a lot oh, of people tell me it. to watch you it. You would love it. You would love it. Yep. That's yeah. what I've heard, man. Yeah, it's up your alley. Especially okay. um, uh, John Lithgow in season four. John Lithgow oh. plays the villain in season four. Okay. Yeah. Love him. Just don't actor. think about um, Lord Farquaad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he looks nothing like him. I love that yeah. they do the mocap thing now, but I'm glad they didn't do that with Shrek. Oh, Wouldn't gosh. it be weird if you watch if you're watching if you're watching Shrek and you just see Mike Myers' face on Shrek? It'd be a little weird, right? It would be weird. Uh, yeah, it would. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. When they be... try that with Cat in the Hat. Ooh, mm, yeah. No, mm, yeah. I'm sorry. I think. That and then the love gear, and this is why they don't have Austin Powers for. It's like, <laughs> oh gosh! This is like that was like not even like a, a slow decline. That was like a true. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's true, man. Yeah, uh, and hopefully, Mike is, He's probably saved his money. He seems. Oh, like I a, saw something really funny. Yeah. I love it. It connects to all of this, and oh, yeah. um, it was just the clip version was better because uh, I'll, I'll explain after. But essentially, this interviewer uh, was asking him if he ever got like compared to Michael Myers. Halloween because they share the same name 
And essentially, and I was waiting for this forever, like my entire life for him to address this. And it was way better than I ever expected. He says, um, so when I was cashing my first check from SNL, I go to the bank and the teller is like, what are you going to kill me? Because she read Michael Myers out loud. On it. <laughs> That's awesome. But then like afterwards, if you look at the full version and not the clip version, he like complains about it. It's like, really? So it's like, uh, you know, you kind of ruined it. You had something great there. And yeah. so somebody cut it together to be that. But I'd take it as a compliment. I would. Yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, why not? I could get a good laugh out of it. I was, honestly. My cousin, when I was a kid, she's like, I'm afraid of Michael Myers. And I'm like, what? Austin Powers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. The shape. The shape, though, know. man. Yeah. Dun. Ooh. Dun. Dun. <laughs> Dun. Hey, you want to hear something funny? I can play the theme song. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. I don't even know how to pick any of them. That's the only thing that sounds like. I'm not actually going to play it. Play it. Here it is. There we go. <laughs> sorry, I, I, had to, I had to call my girlfriend's phone. She lost it. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Say hi. Hi. She said hi. Hello. She says hi. <laughs> You're not on camera. Though. Oh, you wanna you wanna dip in? That's her finger blocking the camera. Hi. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Saying hi. She just can't hear you because. Um, oh, that's right. <laughs> here, I'm calling it. All right. I'm not even gonna cut this part because it was funny. Yeah. Got a little, a little, uh, a little entertainment, a little live, little live guitar picking's always well, good. I wasn't really that's funny. <laughs> There's actually more to it, obviously. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. But no, I, I one time I, I did that up uh, before like a, a video I played like a, it was uh, to like promote Halloween Kills when it was coming out because oh sweet I was playing at the Museum of Arts and Sciences here in Daytona. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I did it in the video. I love, I love it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Very cool, cool. man. You got anything planned for Halloween ends? Yeah. Are you stuff, excited though? for Halloween ends? I am. I, I really am. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed the first two. I, I'm really, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm also very hopeful and cautiously optimistic that, you know, David Gordon Green is going to bring a great ending to the yeah, trilogy. Yeah, I hope he does, honestly. I hope they address, like, maybe they can bring back the whole Jamie Lee Curtis causing the whole bus accident because I think that was better. Well, we'll see, man. I mean, I think that she, you know he's she's gonna she's obviously gonna die in this movie, in my opinion. And yeah, probably. I think that's happening. I honestly think there's a good chance Michael Myers just may kill everybody. And, and they could they could pull else. a Halloween three ending and literally, but have Michael Myers kill everybody. You're right. They exactly. Could, they could just have an unhappy ending. Yep. Which I wouldn't doubt with the last one. They literally did it with the last one. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I would be fine with that, honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't have a problem yeah, at all with it. Just just shirt on. Kill them all. <laughs> or if not, Allison's going to live. But yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, you're good, man. Um, so, do you have any like uh, final plugs or anything you want to say? I kind of got to wrap it up. I'm going to go to the there. My pizza's almost Yeah. Ready. Oh, dude. Yeah. No. I'm going to do no. this again soon, too. I well, of course. Yeah. Again. Would love to, man. No, I was just going to say, uh, if anyone wants to check out my channel, I do live streams, lots of theory videos, news, uh, and I'm on YouTube. You find me at Craven Something Scary, and, you know, that's it. Just come and find me. Come hang out. as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. And Lethal Collective, yes. I mean, uh, me, along with three other great content creators. Shout have, out to them all. Shout out to Killjoy Jake, Fate Decided, Nightwatch Zone. And we've come together and formed what we're calling the Lethal Collective. And it's where we come together twice a week and we live stream and we talk horror. We just talk back and forth and share our opinions. So we'd love to see you guys over there on YouTube. So come check us out. And subscribe to them and give them the most views they could ever have because they're amazing. Love you guys. Thank All right. So this much, has been the, oh, anytime, anytime. This we has got been it. the Jeeving Insomniac Season 3, Episode 6 with Craven Stuff That's Scary. It was nice having you on, man. Thank you. Thank you, you too. For Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, let's do it again time. sometime. Yeah, sounds good. Wait. All right. All right. Take care.